I will just give a brief presentation. So basically, this is for you to share with you this initiative about this virtual map. This virtual map a response to the platform mandate on contributing to improve the community's participation within the global fund processes. As you will listen in voice of Alfredo, there are several directories and there are many, many, many possibilities to, to get information on who are the ones who are participating in these uh, global fund processes as well as on the multi-country processes from Latin America. But many times it is complicated to navigate through all of these through all this big ocean of information. So what our purpose here is to create a tool that gathers all that information that is available in only one space. Not only that, but also we wanted to, to make it a dynamic tool. We wanted, we wanted to, to make it a, a tool that it is uh, created according to the technological resources that we have nowadays. As you know, on a daily basis, uh, people are now used to use uh, different methodologies that are easy to use, that are friendly to use, and basically that are appealing to the users. And IT and communications uh, tools offered a lot of the different the toolkits. So that is why we decided to develop this map following that principle on using those uh, technologies as well as communication strategies that are innovative. And in that sense, they can help that this information is the more available as possible. So in that sense, that is why today we are launching this virtual map. And before starting with this presentation, I would like to thank to all the people involved, mainly from the CCMs and from the multi-country processes, because thanks to their collaboration and thanks to, to their participation, we were able to gather this information and we were able to have this a very robust map of different actors and key, key populations. So this effort wouldn't be possible without the participation of those directories. So <clears throat> similarly, from the Global Fund for those who are responsible of those uh, agendas and that help us on updating these documents. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Keren, and thank you, Cesar, for helping us on organizing this webinar. And also thank you, Alfredo and Carlos Mario, who have been in, involved in the design as well as on making this virtual map a reality. So. Without further ado, now I give the floor to Alfredo Mejia, who is in charge of the methodology design. So, Alfredo, the floor is yours. Hello, good morning. Uh, greetings from Bogota. Thank you so much for your great participation. I will give a brief presentation on how is it that we develop this virtual map. It looks like this is a, a simple activity to do, like, this is just a source of information at a first hand, mainly for the civil society organizations and community organizations at a regional level. But methodologically speaking, it is uh, the task is simple to do so, but it, it represented a lot of work also. So let me tell you how is it that, I, that we did it. Let me describe it. So some of the background information that Anwar already mentioned are that the objective of the platform lag is to improve knowledge with regards on the global fund for these community groups as well as for civil society and to their access of the technical assistance offered. So communities, they require access to information or, or they require information in an easy way in their subventions uh, from the global fund and in their countries as well as in the region. So when we were giving and offering this technical assistance in Colombia, one of the great conclusions that we have is that organizations and leaders do not know information about the global fund. So that is why we we needed to to fill in this gap of information with these innovative methodologies. 
so those people, organizations and leaders can have access to this information with regards on what's going on with these uh, workshops. And this is also a way to guarantee a more participation within all the processes of the Global Fund through all those who represent them in this context of the country coordinating mechanisms as well as on the regional coordination mechanisms. Another topic that Anual mentioned was that the systems, the information systems of the Global Fund and as victim of the of searching this information is that sometimes they are not so friendly and sometimes they are not updated and looking and being and being able to do a search of these uh, grants it's kind of difficult so there's another source of information that are the, the rmc's uh, websites that whenever they are those websites they are not updated so this is the the background and the justification of why is it that we developed the this virtual map so what are the objectives and what is that we want to do with this virtual map? Well, the, the main objective is to provide the knowledge of those processes from the Global Fund, from the communities, the key populations in Latin America and the Caribbean. And for that, we're just facilitating this fast access to the information, to the strategic information on the Global Fund processes. We're identifying those key actors in the HIV, TB and malaria responses at a national level, but also at a regional level, as for the case of multi-country grants. We also recognize the participation of the communities as well as of the key communities in the processes of the Global Fund. In that sense, we can say that this is one of the main advantages that this tool has because you will be able to find information on who are the representatives within these uh, processes of the mechanisms of the regional coordination mechanisms also to uh, socialize all those news related with the mcps the rps and the srs and also to offer information with regards of the key contacts on those countries and the grants and the multi-country grants in different countries so what was the methodology that we follow? Let's say that the rationale or the model that we base on is the mapping of key actors. This is a technique that allows us to identify individuals and organizations that are considered important within the planning, the design, and the implementation of a project. So in this case, we're speaking about so many projects, but we develop it as a system of the several, several contribu contri contributions of the several countries. So. The mapping of actors not only identifies individuals, groups, and organizations that participate in one topic or an initiative, but this is just a first step to review the level of participation and representation that they have in from the organizations and key populations in the processes of the Global Fund. So what are the steps that we follow? We did initially, we did a, a revision of all the documents. This is a, a lot of information that is out there. So we just prioritize and we discuss whatever we consider like the most relevant with regards of the social civility aspects as well as on key populations. In this sense, we decided to include basic information about current grants. We also included a, a expiration of those current projects and the new ones and also the we analyze the situation of those countries against the policies of the global fund we also analyze and included the financing windows those from this eligibility from 2020 2023 per country and per different components the multi-country grants, the contact of the managers of the Global Fund in every country, because sometimes for the civil society organizations, that information was very far from them. Also, contact with the main receptors of the grants and contact with the members of the CCMs per country, based on who are represented in these uh, decision-making process spaces. After that, we developed a profile per country, but also we developed a profile of these uh, multi-country grants. For that, we requested information. We requested uh, updated information of those members of those MCP and MCRs, RCM and MCR, sorry. And we developed a matrix or a database with information 
described by country, by component, and by uh, multi-country processes. We have translation in three languages. We use the TICS, as Anwar was saying. This is a moment to move forward on the use of these uh, technologies to have better development. And also, we did the web development, which uh, later on Carlos Mario will describe. So I just wanted to highlight it that, that this tool is a live document. And what does that mean? Well, it means that this is a document that it is uh, updated in a constant basis in order to reflect those changes in time and context. This is a tool that describes a very complex system, as I already said, within these interventions, and it is under evo constant evolution. So in order to have a better understanding of this system, it is important to keep it updated because of their uh, nature, which is the website, and because their contents has to be updated uh, permanently. The communities and the key populations can provide uh, the co information on their construction and update. So we kindly invite you to keep this document live and to use this document and also to provide information in case you identified any information that is not correct or, or that it is not updated. So that information and feedback is more than welcome. Next, please. And this is my brief presentation. So thank you so much for that, for your attention. Thank you, Alfredo, and thank you, Anwar, for speaking about a purpose and how is it that this map was developed. And now let's move on to Carlos Mario, who was in charge of uh, developing this map and being able to know and how does this map work. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. I'm just greeting you since uh, from Colombia. Let me share my screen with the map for you to see how, how it works. So the first thing is how to have access to this map. So first we have a link, a direct link, in order to reach that. If you add in Google Chrome or in any other server that you use, if you add mapa.plataformalac.org, you will get to the app directly, or it could be also through the regional platform of Latin America and the Caribbean, which is Plataforma Lac dot org so in the middle range of this website you will include the you will see the link to click on the map so these are the two ways for you to have access to the map it could be directly through the plataforma lag dot org or through the map dot plataforma lag dot org and this will be available for mobile uh, devices as well as for the computers we develop it in such a way that it can adjust to any size screen without any inconvenience, without uh, damaging the surfing the, 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 the application. And that allows us to use it in any, in any context or under any circumstance. So being in the, in the platform here, you, of course, we have a presentation and it goes directly back to the regional platform, Latin American Caribbean app. And then you will have also the option to change it, the language. This is an automatic lang language. As you can see, you can move it from English into Spanish and so on. So if you want more information about the platform and the context and who developed that, we have this. We have this map of interactive map and then just a brief presentation of what it is and what is it that you will find in, in the map. Going back to the, to, to the beginning, you can navigate the website and basically is that you can see directly the country there from your own interest, just to see the information that is available there. And there are several ways to get there, to reach this information within the, the tool. It's, it, these are the several mechanisms for you to reach the information and so they are available for everyone. So if, you, if we want to see the information from Colombia, you can click on, on the map of Colombia or Bolivia or Peru. You can also find here the menu with these current grants and then it will appear a list of all those grants. And as you see here, these are the current grants with, and with these dot colors, it will let us know exactly which are the ones that are active in each one of the countries. So you can see here the one 
the HIV green, TB blue, and malaria yellow, yellow or orange. So here you can see this uh, dot, coded dots where you can see where, which are the grants that we're speaking about related with these topics that are available per country. And you can click on the country just to see all the information that is available there. Also, it offers information about the multi-country grants. And as you know, these are the groups of several countries that, are, that, inclu that include several countries for their implementation. And then you will see here the menu of all of them. Another option that you can see here in, in the platform is it could be that you can choose either per country or per multi-country, or if you want to see only those who are eligible eligible for 2020, 2023, you can click on this one and then you can choose. It will only show those who are eligible between 2020, 2023, or you can have both here as you wish. Or if you want to see either by topic, by the, the components, no, it could be either HIV, TB, or malaria. You can have also this menu that will show you that list uh, as a filter, filter list. And so you can see here, we can only see green dots. And then this is also for TB. It is, these are less countries that have this component. And finally, malaria. Also, another option to reach the countries, let's say that you're not able to see or you see that the map is not so easy for you to, to search for that, then you can have this uh, magnifier and then you just write the name of the country and then it will appear. You choose, select, and then you will see there. And then this is the information that it shows per country. So also the map will show you, will highlight the, the country that you had selected and you're going to have the whole information for the current grant. It, it shows us the different components. It tells us the name of the, of the grant, the period that it has to cover. And also it gives us the eligibility 2020, 2023, as, and the amounts and the periods that uh, they have. And then we find the directory that it is divided in three sections, in, in four sections, sorry. For the first section, we have the managers of these global fund grants. You can find the name and the email, the main receptors in the country. And this is also the classified per component, the name of the organization that is linked to, and then the contact information and their email. And it is also for the, um, for the CCM, uh, representatives as well as from the civil society organizations and key populations that are linked to each one of these components. So this is a very complete directory where you can find the information that by name, by emails, by position or the organizations that they belong to. And that's how it is found in all the countries. As you can see, you can navigate uh, through Venezuela. It shows the same information. Ecuador, and so on and so forth. So you will find the same pieces of information. And you can also do the translation directly uh, changing the language. So as you can see, it changes uh, fast for you to choose your preferable language. And you can find the same information for the multi-country grants. It says, it, it describes what are the countries that are involved in this multi-grant. Multi the current uh, grant, the who is the main receptor, who are the members of the CCM and the civil society organization members. So basically this is the whole service that this platform will give you. Thank you so much, Carlos Mario, for showing us how the map works. And congratulations because this is an awesome work and this is something that uh, it has taken you several months to do so and develop. So thank you so much for that. I don't know if someone has any comment or any question, you can raise your hand. I see that there are some colleagues from the Global Fund. So, and, and I don't want to, to put them in the spotlight, but it will be nice to hear from you also what is the, the perspective that you have on having this virtual map that it is available and accessible easy to understand so